welcome back to Infinity TV. I go by the name of DJ Treacy Trees. Today is Friday, July 7th, and these are the breaks. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Welcome back to The Breaks, y'all. It's DJ Treacy Trees. Happy Friday. I hope y'all had a good short week. Lord knows that we all needed this short week coming off of that long holiday. A couple days of work is all we really need, to be honest, y'all. Let's jump right into Break It or Leave It. The internet has been on fire this week, so most of the show is going to be social for me. I have been running my mouth all over the internet, and I've got tons of topics to talk about today. First off, I want to start off with the Kiki Palmer situation. Now, if you have not seen what's happening with Kiki Palmer and her boyfriend going on Twitter, let me quickly recap the whole week for you, all right? Kiki Palmer, uh, who's a famous personality, she hosts a lot of stuff. She was a child star. She's been out for a long time. She's from Illinois, so, you know, I got a lot of Chicago love for Kiki Keep a Job Palmer. Um, So what happened was Kiki went to the Usher concert. Y'all know Usher's residency. Y'all been seeing the videos out. My man be on skates. He be grinding on people, doing the Janet Jackson and bringing people on stage, all right? Kiki went. She had on a little midi dress. I think her booty cheeks was out or something. It was like a little sheer situation. Um, Usher was singing and grinding on her. Now, mind you, Usher is pretty old in comparison to Kiki Palmer, right? Kiki Palmer is like 30, 31. Usher is, what is he, in his late 40s? I don't know. He was around. He was doing live shows. He was 16 when I was like six. So let's just calculate that. So Usher is a lot older than her. Everybody who comes to the Usher concert knows that he's putting on this sexy, sultry show. He back skating all over the thing. So he brought her up on stage. He did a little grind on her. And her boyfriend, Darius, they just had a baby. The baby ain't even one. I don't know how many, you know, how many months old the baby is. But Kiki got a new body. So, you know, she looking like a young mom. Darius gets on Instagram and says, um, but your outfit, you're a mom. You should have morals, basically Mm-mm. saying, Kiki, you should not be on stage with Usher wearing this suggestive outfit because now you're a mom. So the internet exploded and women all over the world dragged Darius until he deactivated his Twitter. But then he came back and started, kept talking stuff, and men all over the world was like, please deactivate your Twitter. These women are dragging you because his comments made no sense. Here's my take on it. Kiki is a new mom. Her and Darius are dating, okay? They decided to have a baby together, um, but Darius didn't decide to ask her to marry him. Kiki is a co-parent. She is single, y'all, so she can go out and do whatever she wants to do. Again, this was a show. Kiki is a famous performer, It seems a little bit insecure to try to tell her what she can and can't wear when she got a stylist. She is on TV. (laughs) She is in all these other places, Darius. And if you wanted something to say about her outfit, then you should have a little bit more commitment, right? Is that just me? If you want to have a dog in the fight of, babe, maybe you shouldn't wear this outfit, you should come with a little bit more commitment because you're looking like a co-parent and hella insecure with the things that she can and can't wear when you're not even her man for real, dog. Y'all dating. So people on the internet have been dragging it and dragging it and dragging it. But that is my final say. If you want a dog in the fight, you want a seat at the table, you probably should pull up with some more responsibilities and requirement, Darius, because being mad about her outfit makes you look more insecure than the whole situation, you know, happened. See you later, Darius. Moving on to the NBA breakaway report. Y'all, the NBA, the free agency has been rolling. We've been talking about it for a couple shows. It's coming to an end, thank goodness, because I am tired of seeing all of this drama with the back and forth, the three-team deal, two-team deal. It's finally time for some basketball again. The Summer League just jumped off. Uh, I've been watching a couple games, and to be honest, I am i haven't been really impressed. I watched a couple of those Hornets games just to check out the number two pick, uh, Miller. 
And he's looking a little light on the points. It just seems like there are other players. If you were the number two pick, you should be scoring 20 points or more in summer league, in my opinion, if you were drafted in the top 10. Um, and I could be completely wrong. These people could be needing time to adjust and, you know, get used to the, the competitiveness of G League kind of play. But I want it to be wild, right? You get all these million-dollar contracts. You got these people. You got us watching this, this media circus, only for these people to score, like, I think he had, like, six points in the last game or something like that. So it's kind of looking like a womp. But a big part of the summer league is coming up now. We haven't seen the number one draft pick, Wimby, play at all, y'all. And tonight he has his summer league debut in Vegas, 9 p.m. Eastern time. 6 p.m. PST. I'm excited to see to see how he's going to play. And the Spurs are playing the Hornets, which means the number one pick and the number two pick are playing each other. So this should be a very interesting game. Get y'all popcorn. Go chill at the crib. I don't know what channel it's on, but make sure y'all are tapped into the NBA Summer League to see how the rookies are going to play coming up here soon. Y'all already know, for people who've been watching the show or are fans of DJ Treacy Trees, y'all know Scoot is my number one pick. I do not recognize Wimby as my number one pick of the draft this season. I'm excited to see how Scoot is going to play for the Trail Blazers, um, especially since, you know, Dame is not going to be there anymore because he is in full tantrum mode. <laughs> that is the perfect segue to go into the final part of the break of my NBA breakaway report. We've been talking a lot about Dame. Last week I said another day, another Dame. But now my mans has officially said, I don't care where y'all sign me to. If it's not the Miami Heat, I'm not showing up for camp. That is a very bold statement. That is very, very bold. It's like, dang, Miami or bust. And Portland has made it very clear that they don't want to send him to the Miami Heat because they would be arming a championship team, and they know that. So they want to try to dump Dame into any other place, but he is standing on his ground and saying, if I it's Miami or it's nothing. So let's see if Dame can take his talents down to South Beach. I'd be surprised if he makes it there, but this is making for some drama. I didn't think that we would get to this point where now the trade is in a grinding halt because Dame is absolutely refusing to participate with any other team, man. Whew. I want to see what Charles Barkley and all these other people got to say because they usually call NBA players crybabies when they're stars and they only want to go to a certain team. But I actually respect Dame for saying, nah, it's going to be the team I want or nothing at all. You better stand your ground, Dame. You deserve it after doing 11 years in Portland, Oregon with all that rain and all of that. You know you out. You wasn't in L.A. or nowhere in the sunshine where you could be enjoying yourself. You better take it to South Beach. You want some bikinis. You want some grilling all year. You want some Florida heat. I feel that. Live your best life. I hope the best for you, but I don't know if they're going to send you to the uh, to the Miami Heat. It's looking like you might be dumped over with the Celtics, in my opinion, you know, because they're in the rebuilding phase, and they probably won't do nothing for another couple years. But that's all I got for my NBA breakaway report. Let's move on to Unbreakable. The WNBA, let's talk about it. Um, I actually had my first L.A. Sparks weekly uh show on the court at crypto this week so just quick shout out to la sparks we can make y'all make sure y'all follow us on instagram and follow our show right here on this infinity channel so going into the wnba the sparks are already having a, a weird season but it looks like everybody else is having a weird season because the las vegas aces are looking pretty unbreakable over 15 wins there's only like two or three teams in the wnba who have more than 10 wins right now and the Las Vegas Aces are looking like they are a train that just can't be stopped. Boom. Asia just extended her contract, so their star player just extended it for another couple years. They just won a ring. They just had a parade. Vegas got the new dome that y'all seen on um, Instagram and all that with the lights. Las Vegas is looking like the place to be. I don't know. Should I pack my bags up and go hang out in Vegas? Because the sports teams are killing it. Uh, the vibes are looking good. The, the the They have the NBA Summer League. So Vegas is looking like the place to be. The one thing that could change the, the tides for the Aces would be if there was a wild card injury of some sort. But if there's no kind of injury and that team can stay healthy, there is no way that the New York Liberty or the Connecticut Sun can even catch up to them, y'all. This is a perfect time for us to pay some bills. Let's go into a quick commercial break. Let's keep it locked. 
on the brakes. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown. Welcome back to the breaks, y'all. It's your girl, DJ Treacy Trees. Thanks for keeping it locked. Let's jump right into our next segment. Let's talk about breaking the rules, y'all. Who's breaking the rules this week? And to be honest, it's the billionaires that are on the block breaking all the rules. It's been pretty fun, admittedly, watching Elon and Zuckerberg fight each other for our attention, right? Don't we feel special? So <laughs> there's a couple new social media apps that dropped this week in case you've missed it. It all happened in a couple days, so don't feel bad. You know your girl got you. I'll recap you real quick. So Elon last week, you, who owns Twitter, you know Elon Musk, y'all, he bought Twitter for a bunch of billion dollars. Last week he imposed um, a strict restriction on how many tweets you could read how many that you could go through. He put all these caps on it because what he's saying was that all these bots were coming through Twitter and scraping information and then sharing it on newsletters and other social media sites. So he wanted to stop that so these bots could not be t- stealing his information but so that people could stay on Twitter. But the adverse thing happened. As soon as he put in those Twitter restrictions, everybody was basically like, bye-bye, Twitter. We're done with you completely. We'll do something different. So Zuckerberg watched very closely as Elon said that, and he dropped his app Threads, which is Instagram's version of Twitter, um, a couple days later. But there was an app in between there that you might have missed, and there was an app called Spill. So this app is kind of like Twitter, but it has a little bit more of that Tumblr feel, and it's invite only right now, so it's Apple devices only. Not no Androids, and you have to have these invite codes to use it. It was marketed toward Black Twitter, so basically, um, it's a Black-owned app that uh, creators say, "You know, we tired of giving billionaires our dollars. We're gonna take all of our premium content and go to this other app, which is Spill, and we're gonna spill the tea." So it's for Black and LGBTQ people, but at some point it's going to be open to the public. It's just not there yet. So I'm guessing as soon as Zuckerberg saw that Spill got all these people. He was just like, you know what? Let me go ahead and drop my app now so that while people are switching apps, they can effectively switch to mine. Again, the billionaires undercutting the independent folks like us. But I'm on both, (laughs) to be honest. And the quick recap of it is, Threads looks exactly like Twitter, almost a carbon copy, y'all. The thing that it does well is it just uses, it takes all of your Instagram information and lets all of your followers on there know that you have Threads now. So you have a companion app to talk on, but Instagram is, again, your picture app. 
I think that's going to work in Zuckerberg's favor because the only reason that people weren't going back to Twitter or using Twitter is because it's a completely different ecosystem, y'all. You got to go on there and find your friends again. It's got different community standards. But your Instagram and your threads are combined together, kind of like the Facebook um, integration. The one thing that Zuckerberg stuck in there that nobody saw but the Internet is finding out now is once you activate threads and link your account, there is no going back. You have signed a 360 welcome to death row records deal, y'all. This means that if you want to deactivate your threads account, you will have to deactivate your Instagram account. If you violate the community guidelines on threads, you will lose your Instagram account, which means Keep it professional, and this is not your Twitter space. Twitter was notoriously known as a more ratchet place that you could just say whatever you felt, more a little bit more freedom of speech, but Threads is monitored. Y'all, the feds is on there watching. It's the same thing as Instagram business as usual, but Spill is uncensored. There is nobody on there watching you. There are no ads. There are no people trying to sell you services. There is nobody saying, click my link in my bio. I kind of like Spill. Spill is my secret place on the internet to go hide from all of y'all. So I ain't got to look at the comments. So I can say whatever I want and not be canceled. So if you are on Spill, it is an uncensored um, experience. And no, I don't have no more invite tickets to send y'all. Y'all need to hit up y'all network and find somewhere. So that is the quick synopsis. Twitter still exists, but ain't nobody messing with Twitter. Elon is saying he's going to sue Mark Zuckerberg because he stole his intellectual property for building Spill. But really what he's saying is the people who used to work at Twitter helped Zuckerberg build threads. <laughs> you didn't think that was going to happen? Elon, six months ago you was asking people to sleep on the floor at the, at the office. They said, fuck this, we're not doing that. We're going to go home. We're going to sleep somewhere else. We're going to be independent. You literally fired people over email. You turned off their badges. You turned Twitter's uh, home base into some kind of uh, shanty town of a startup company. It was weird, weird energy vibes. You didn't think those people was going to go work somewhere else? You didn't think they was going to build their own thing like Spill? That's what happened with Spill. So you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Welcome to the circus, Elon. You wasted all of your money, and Zuckerberg is going to find a way to exploit us on the other side. But we don't care because we didn't even really care for Twitter anyway. R.I.P. to Twitter, y'all. Uh, Heartbreak Hotel. Let's move right on into the next segment. Michael Jordan has announced, if, I don't know if y'all even saw this part, so let me recap this again for y'all. It's a lot going on socially, but you know your girl got you for the recaps. Michael Jordan's son is dating Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. You heard that right. I had to I almost stuttered going through it because it sounds so ridiculous. So Scottie Pippen ex-wife, Larza Pippen, is dating Michael Jordan's son. <laughs> Yeah, let's let that get out of teacher pause. But Michael Jordan just made a stance about it. Somebody asked him, for the record, does he support it? And he said no. Why do we need to ask him that question? What dad would support this kind of relationship? I Honestly, my dad didn't care who I was dating. Male, female, young, old, no dad cares at all about who you dating, especially in this weird Larza Pippen kind of situation because she is cougar in this young man. It's, blink twice if you're okay. Uh, Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan. <laughs> I almost couldn't remember his damn name for a second. But it's just weird vibes. Larza has been out Larzen, but duh, Michael Jordan doesn't support this. Stop asking him stupid questions, y'all. Um, his heart is broken at some at, at some level of it because Scotty was his teammate for a long time, and I'm not sure if Michael and Scotty actually beef. I think that. I think they probably do because of the Last Dance um, documentary. So on top of all of that, you dating my son. It's just your ex-wife is dating my... I'm confused as y'all, y'all. Larza and Marcus Jordan need to make this stop. We gonna go and pause for our last commercial break. Make sure you keep it locked on the breaks. Profanity Nation. Profanity Nation. Profanity Nation. 
a podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Welcome back to the break, y'all. Thank y'all for sticking with me this whole episode. Let's keep it rolling on this Friday. We're going straight into breaking the bank, y'all. There was a viral clip that that dropped on the internet this week of Ocho Cinco, who's one of my favorite personalities, by the way. I love the fact that he is so cheap. He is just, he got a lot of money. He be riding in these little ass cars. He ain't buying them, but he said he wear fake jewelry, like, what a real experience for a celebrity. He's trying to keep as much money as he can, and that is felt. I ain't, He ain't trying to stump for nobody or nothing. But he got a new lady friend, his girl, and they were at um, finish line at the mall. And you know how some of the malls got the, the basketball court in there where you can just kind of hoop a little bit, try your shoes out, you know, a little attraction. But he decided to not just buy his lady shoes. He captioned it as, Fellas, don't just give your lady money. Make her work for it. So he did a love and basketball kind of uh, situation with her at the finish line. She had on some flat ass sandals. He had on some Birkenstocks with some socks, y'all. Like not even they wasn't even ready to play basketball. He just decided, you know what? I'm gonna make her work for this little bit of coin. It's eighty nine ninety nine or whatever it is for her shoes. When I tell y'all, y'all need to go find this clip because old girl ball him in them mm-hmm. flat ass Tory Burch sandals, y'all. She had she didn't even have a, a loop on the back of her sandal. She had on them flat Jesus sandals, and she was hitting threes. She went in and hit a layup on him. He tried to turn it up a little bit, and she balled him. Your girl ball him up in them shoes, and I'm I hope he bought her whatever the hell she wanted because. She didn't make a big stink about it. She was crossing him. It just, it was the perfect moment, y'all, loving basketball. That bit him back. So, uh, break the bank on her a little bit, on Chosinko. Just don't be so cheap with it. Look like the lady is having fun. Another thing that I want to talk about with breaking the bank is all of this money that's going around in the NBA. I wish I could get a little bit of it. Mr. Rich Paul, he is putting some secret sauce in these contracts, y'all. All of his talent are the highest paid guys in the NBA right now. And from a guy with no college degree, he out here negotiating some big boy contracts. Let me give you a couple uh, just so you can get a quick um idea of the kind of talent that he has on his roster. LeBron James is the top at 47 million for this year. Anthony Davis right behind him, 40 million. Zach Levine, 40 million. Darius Garland, 34. He got De'Aaron Fox, Lonzo Ball, Gary Trent Jr. DeJounte Murray just extended his contract for near $20 million. That's a Rich Paul special, y'all. Who else he got on here? He got KCP, um, who is a champion, two-time champion now, 14 million. He's got Miles Bridges. Ooh, we need Miles Bridges real bad over here. 
Scottie Pippen Jr., I mean, Rich Paul is really doing his thing and getting in his bag. Next season, he has $370 million in booked contracts, and I'm sure there's a couple in there that I don't even know about because they, you know, a little red light into the, into the uh, trade deadline special kind of thing. Congratulations to Rich Paul, man. You have done your thing. You have really started a new business that nobody would have invested in. But you stayed locked in with your man, LeBron, and you have built this this dynasty of clutch sports, man. So Rich Paul is doing a fantastic job with breaking the bank and getting these NBA players paid. Let's move to breaking out with wrapping up the show. The one thing I want to talk about, y'all, just to let y'all know what's happening. If you are an NBA 2K <coughs> player, I am too. Make sure you follow me on every social media platform at DJ Treacy Trees. I'll probably be doing some gameplay when a new game come out because 2K24 will have Kobe on the cover, y'all. They bringing the Mamba back for the special. I love the fact that they are putting Kobe out. I'm going to make sure I get that deluxe version. And also, it's going to be cross-play, which means Xbox, PS5, and people on the computer can play each other. Now, before you do this, NBA 2K, don't break my heart. You better get them bugs out of that game because every cross-play game, that motherfucker be moving so damn slow. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure you, we be on our P's and Q's. If you need somebody to test the game, I am available. Everybody hook up your Ethernet cord. Don't be on that whack-ass Wi-Fi making my game slow on your Xbox or whatever your Microsoft system is because I'm going to be on that PS5 lightning stream fast uh, streaming this game with Kobe on the front of it. I'm hoping for some cool players. It looks like um, Inescu is going to be on the front of the WNBA cover, y'all. So we have some great things coming in the gaming world on the NBA. So look out for the new NBA 2K24. And last but certainly not least, y'all saw me on the L.A. Sparks weekly post-game show. I'll be there every game. We had a really good time, me, Michael, and Fredo. So I want to just close with a little bit of Sparks talk. Michael and Fredo are Debbie Downers on the Sparks right now. They're trying to hold the coach accountable. They're talking about all of these injuries. People need to do better. We are doing the best we have with what we have, y'all, to be honest. It's kind of sad, but I'm thinking like the Lakers, we can turn it around after the All-Star break, okay? I'm hoping NECA goes and gets some love and everything. But the number one thing that has made me feel like we have some hope, Lexi was back on the court, y'all. Lexi, Lexi was on the court. Her and Shanae were sitting on the bench, and I've never been so excited to see some cute-ass outfits, to be honest. I was fine with them not being in warm-ups. Just looking at them on the bench next to Lasia talking and stuff made me feel like there is a light at the end of the tunnel for the Sparks. We won't be relying on hardship players for much long, okay? <laughs> Hopefully soon we can get back into those scoring. Um, we can get back into that scoring percentage. Everybody take a break during All-Star break, except for the people who've been playing, you know, Sparks. Make sure y'all practice because we ain't had no practice. We was on that long-ass uh, away game stretch. You're home, sleep in your bed, get some practice. Lexi, please come back to us. I hope that everything is well with you. Laisha, wrap that foot up, girl. Everybody just put on some, some foot braces because Carly – is also out with a foot injury, which is hurting us a little bit. But if we can get those foot braces on, we can think positively, maybe say some affirmations, do some yoga over this break. We can make it into the winning percentages. Thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of The Break. Of course, it's your girl, DJ Treacy Treese. You can catch me here every Friday, but make sure you subscribe to the Infanity TV channel. Hit that button and let us know what you thought of today's show in the comments. I'll see y'all next week.